Welcome back to another episode of Animal of the Week. Today I've decided to take a look at a bird because it's been a very long time since we did one. This bird is the long wattled umbrella bird. The reason for its name is pretty clear just from looking at it. It possesses a very long wattle. A wattle is a sort of fleshy bit of skin that hangs under many birds such as cassowaries and roosters, but the long wattled umbrella bird in my opinion puts all others to shame with its hugely long wattle that looks like a feather duster hanging from its chin. The umbrella bird bit comes from the fact that it's a member of the genus Cephalopod Paris, known more commonly as the umbrella birds. There are actually only three species of umbrella bird, and all look pretty similar with distinctive black crests on their head, which is where the umbrella link comes from, as some people believe them to resemble little black umbrellas on their heads. Of course, the possession of a long wattle is sex-based, with females usually having very diminished ones, or sometimes none at all. Long wattled umbrella birds live in South America, specifically only in western Colombia and western Ecuador. Within these countries they inhabit the humid mountainous cloud rainforests around 1500 meters above sea level, most commonly being found in fruiting trees of these forests, as they provide a close food source. Females are largely solitary, but are sometimes observed to cohabit with another member of the species, and so are males for most of the year, except when it's time to mate, in which case many males congregate together to form a lek. They are predominantly frugivores, however they have been known to feed upon small lizards and insects if the opportunity arises. However, they are hardly skilled hunters and will only seek these out mainly during the rainy season when the rich nutritious fruit trees are not in bloom, and not so abundant in their lush rainforest habitats. This makes them key seed dispensers in their habitat as the seeds they eat from their fruity diet will come out as waste and spread more fruiting plants across the forest. As previously mentioned, these birds congregate in leks in order to attract mates. A lek is simply a commonly known area where males will come together to compete with each other in courtship displays in order to attract solitary females that will come to the lek to browse their selection and decide upon a mate. Now with this in mind, it becomes rather obvious what the long wattles of the long wattled umbrella bird are for. They are used in these courtship displays and can be extended or retracted with a larger wattle obviously being preferred. They will swing their wattles around making grunting calls. There is certainly a joke to be made there, but I'm going to keep this PG. The wattle also helps to amplify these noises when extended. However, another key thing the females are looking for is aggressive and territorial behaviour, so things can sometimes get rather heated with these birds squaring up to each other. Once the female has selected a mate, copulation takes place and then the female will build a nest in the trees or on high ferns. Only one egg is produced per season, but after about a month it will hatch after the female has incubated it the whole time. The female then provides food for the offspring until they can take their first flight. The wattle is quite cumbersome for a bird to have, which is why they have the amazing ability to extend and retract it. Not fully into itself, but it can certainly shorten it enough to be able to properly fly without it swinging around and causing too much drag. Like many birds of paradise, they possess a great level of sexual dimorphism, with the males being larger in overall size at 40cm in height, compared to females at around 35 but more importantly the size difference in the wattle is stark. This is of course all to do with the breeding process, as females don't have to attract males. For the same reason, the female usually have smaller umbrella crests as well. Sadly, these amazing birds are classified as vulnerable by the IUCN. This is because there are only thought to be around 6,000 to 15,000 left. Habitat loss has by far been the greatest factor in the bird's decline. They rely upon the forest not just for food, but also for lecking. Because they all go back to the same lecking sites every year, they come to rely upon those sites for mating, and when one is destroyed it disrupts the whole process. Lecking also leaves them vulnerable to hunters, as people have pretty easily figured out where these sites are, and so they they can be trapped very easily and sold as exotic pets for meat or for their amazing feathers. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.